What's up guys? Welcome to Life of Acro. I'm Acro Brandon and this is my life. Today we asked the question, can you have two different remotes for one skateboard? So typically, the question is actually the reverse of what I'm asking. What most people want to know is, can I have one remote for multiple skateboards? So for me, I have two skateboards. I have my Hummy. I have my new Flux deck that I just built. My GT2B is actually my most favorite remote. It's super ergonomic. The throw, the trigger, it works out really good for me. So all I want to have is one remote for both boards. Super simple, you just get the receiver, you put one in board A, you put one in board B, you sync this up to both of them, and then you're good to go. But you might be asking, why would I want two remotes for one board? And the answer to that is actually quite simple, is I have friends that I wanna come ride some of my other boards, and if I only have one remote for both boards, what am I supposed to do? So I could crack open the case, and for this one, I actually just happen to have a mini. If you have never tried a mini remote, they work pretty good. Uh, the trigger finger's quite nice on them. They fit in the hand. It's got a small profile. Uh, they're super reliable as well, especially if, like me, I ride in New York City, so they have a lot of radio interference down there, so you want a really reliable remote. GT2B has never failed me. The uh, mini remote has worked really well, and then I've heard the Flip Sky VX1s and 2s, I believe, work quite well down there. Um, but at any rate, this is just a cheap backup remote, and what I don't want to be doing is when I have a friend come is unscrewing the case just so I can put a new receiver in there so they can ride the board and then when they're done, switch it back and all that stuff. So the solution that I've come up with here is to try and wire in a switch. Yeah, it's just an on, off, on type of switch right here where it's one, off, and then two. So that could be receiver one, receiver two, my favorite remote, my second favorite remote, keep it easy. And uh, before I actually made this video, I was trying this, right? Uh, basically, we just have a cutoff on the signal wire. So what I was initially thinking was, if a, if a receiver doesn't need to be powered on, why should it be powered on? So when I had first wired this up, I wired it in to cut off the grounding signal. Um, and then when I flip the switch, each receiver would respectively turn on. I'm not really sure what the actual issue is with that, but there, it was not working. Um, it was getting all sorts of weird interference. It was jumping up and down. It wouldn't work right. The GT2B didn't have a problem, but the mini remote did um, with this setup. So I decided to come back around and this time now I'm actually cutting off the signal uh, wire right here. So both remotes or both receivers will be powered all the time when the board is on, but I get to decide which signal is passing through the switch depending on which remote that I'm working. So let's check it out and I'll show it to you in application uh, on the bench, it works. I haven't had any runaway, the fail safe is set properly, uh, no major issues there and it actually works. So uh, let me put this over the board and I'll show you what we got going on. So we are going to log into the Fock box. we'll scan, we will connect. There we go, we'll come over here to configuration, read the current configuration. Yes, motor calibration is good. Remote configuration right down here, keep it disabled. So right now it's not receiving any signal because I don't have anyone in particular uh, showing right here. Okay, so we have the GT2B. I'm gonna come over here. We're gonna come in to calibrate. Okay, we're on number one right here, which is my GT2B. So as I squeeze it, I get a full throttle. And if I hit the brake, I get that set up right there. I can hit apply. And then I'm gonna hit apply here again as once again. And then while it's still disabled, you can notice that as I pull the trigger, we get 100%. And as I hit the brake, I get 100% brake. We're good to go there, okay? And then if I wanted to run the wheels, I could apply that and then, right? And that works perfectly, okay? So then if I wanna to switch to the other one, okay? Um, I'm gonna turn this off. I am going to come back and disable this, that way nothing goes crazy while I'm trying to calibrate the other remote. So now I'm gonna switch over to number two, which would be my mini remote. All right, let's turn this on. We can see we have the red light, okay? And so once again, we're gonna come over here into calibrate. Let me notice if we pull here, so let's just reset this. Full signal. Full break, apply, apply. All right, and you can see we're here zeroed out. Give it a full signal. There we go. 
full brake, good. Full throttle, full brake, great. Now let's just enable it so we can see how that works on the tires or the motors. Don't, don't mind my wobbly ass tires. We definitely need to get that. But it seems to be a quick, easy solution, right? And then if I turn it off, right, it's dead. We get a negative one response right here because I have all of my fail safe set properly per receiver before we go here. And then once again, if I wanted to switch back to the GT2B, which I'm going to do because I don't have anybody riding this thing, I'm going to come back PPM, disabled, apply it. That way I can do whatever I need to do without this thing going crazy. Fire up the GT2B, switch this back over to receiver number one. Okay, coming back over here to calibrate one last time. Do a little reset, full throttle, full brake, apply, apply. Everything zeroes out, right? Full throttle, full brake, good to go. Replace that back so that we have actual response. And so this seems to be working here as far as on the bench is concerned. Um, I do tend to make sure that like if I turn off the remote and let it sit for 30 seconds to a minute that there's no runaway or anything like that or there's no wrong responses. But uh, on the bench and sitting around all this testing, that seems to be working just fine. And so that's going to be my solution, right? So I guess the answer to the question is, can you have two remotes for one board with just an easy on-off switch like this? That's a yes. So hopefully that helps you guys. What I'm about to do is go cut a hole on the side of the case and install this switch. And then hopefully I'll never have to open this fucking case again. All right. Until the next video, this is Life of Acro. I'm Acro Brandon, and I'll see you next time.